In this video, we will be finding the number of functions that exist from one set to the other set. Suppose we have been given two sets which are non-empty, they have some elements. We have to find out how many functions actually exist from one set to the other. Let's get started with finding that. Suppose we have two sets A and B which are not empty, they have some elements. A has elements as A1, A2, A3 and so on up till An and B has some elements as B1, B2, B3 and so on till Bm. So here I can say that N terms are there and here I can say that M terms are there. So how many terms here? It is N terms here and how many terms here? It is M terms here. And we have what? We have a function f from a to b already given to me. Let's see how to find out the number of functions from a to b. Now, talking about the first element a1, a1 can be associated. The first element a1, the first element a1 can be associated with how many elements? Any mapping can be done, A1 can be associated with B1 or B2 or B3, so on till Bm. So, A1 can be associated with M terms. So, A1 can be associated with M terms. Any of the M terms would do. There is no issue with considering this one or that one. Talk about A2, with how many terms can A2 be associated? A2 can also be associated with any of the M terms because there is no condition given as to A2 has not to be associated with the element with which A1 has been. So even A2 can be associated with how many terms? All M terms. You can also talk about A3 in the same manner. A3 can be associated with again M terms and so on till the last A. Which was the last A? How many terms did A have? A had N terms. So the last A was An and An can be associated with again M terms. So, the function would be complete when the function would be complete when all these elements all the elements of the domain are associated nothing is left unassociated so for a function to be completed for a function to exist for a function to exist what is the necessary condition that all these associations have to be made so it is like first m be associated then the second m be associated, then the third m be associated and then the last m be associated. Now what mathematical algebraic operation should be applied to these m's? You know that in probability we studied the product rule when we say that the first condition followed and then the second condition and then the third condition so that and is nothing but what? It is the multiplication. And since it is happening for all of them, so we have this so on symbol. Now how many m's are there? How many times this association should be done? This association should be done these many number of times, which is till n. So these m's are how many times? These m are n terms or n times. It would be better if we use n times instead of n terms that means m is multiplied how many times that means m is multiplied to the power n m multiplied to the power n now just let me know what was m and just let me know what was n m was what m was the number of elements in the core domain and what was n? n was the number of elements in the first set that means the domain. So 
a generalized formula would be number of elements number of elements in the codomain to the bracket to the power number of elements in the domain or I just write domain elements for short. So this was the formula for how to find out the number of relations or functions, relations we did earlier, this is functions, for the sets, non-empty sets to given to me, the formula is nothing but number of elements in the codomain to number of elements in the domain.